Hello, uh, my name is Gabriel Estrate, and I'm going to present my work with uh, my colleagues Cosmin Bunkish and Adrian Krachun on kernelization, proof complexity, and social choice. So, uh, I like tapas in real life and in research, and combining different research areas is a nice uh, way to learn about a lot of lots of cool stuff. So I said in uh, this paper that to uh, understand what we're doing, you need a little bit out of three uh, research areas. And I realized presenting, uh, preparing these slides that I was wrong. You need uh, a couple of notions from four different areas. So these are proof complexity uh, and then parameterized complexity, specifically kernelization and computational social choice and uh, last but not least, com combinatorial algebraic topology. In a nutshell, what we do in this paper is we see how notions from parameterized complexity can help us obtain efficient propositional proofs. And we apply this to proof complexity of statements from computational social choice and continue our work on statements from combinatorial algebraic topology. And because of this diverse background that's required, I'm not going to insist on technical details. I hope to be able to convey the general philosophy uh, and uh, I'm not going to pre fully present all the results in the paper. So the starting point is propositional proof complexity. We're talking here about unsatisfiable uh, formulas and we want to prove they're unsatisfiable. And of course you can do that by example resolution, and you can talk about the complexity of such a proof, which is the minimum length of a proof. And of course, resolution is quite limited. Uh, proof complexity has concentrated on some more powerful proof systems, including some of which we don't know how to approve uh, exponential lower bounds for. Uh, and the proof system that we're interested in is the so-called Frege proofs. And uh, to define it, we can uh, take uh, a look at the so-called Hilbert-Ackerman proof system. It has uh, the usual ones, proposition variables, connectives, a couple of axiom schemata, and uh, one inference rule. And the choice of this is not really um, important because there is a result, a classical result of Koch and Rakow that show that to a certain extent all Frege proof systems are equivalent in the sense that they all simulate each other with a polynomial uh, uh, overhead. And the problem that motivated us was the problem of separating Frege versus extended Frege proof systems. So what's an extended Frege proof system? It's a Frege proof system where you're allowed to uh, do variable substitutions, that is substitute new variables for formulas. Of course, this won't help you prove uh, more things, but it may allow you to prove things more efficiently in terms of the length of this bolus proof. And the question is, can we come up with uh, formulas that uh, for which extended Frege is exponentially more powerful than Frege? This is a classical problem in, uh, that was discussed by Bonnet, Abbas, and Pitassi. And a lot of natural formulas have been uh, proposed in the literature, and uh, most of them have turned out to have quasi-polynomial, that is, uh, sub-exponential Frege proofs, so they don't really, uh, they're not candidates for such a separation. And there are a couple of examples, and there are more examples than the ones that I give here. Okay, now uh, a two-minute course on parameterized complexity. So we're going to start with the observation that many problems in NP or in co-NP are actually parameterized. For instance, when you're talking about an instance of vertex cover, you're given a graph, but you're also given an integer k. And you want to decide whether the graph has a vertex cover of size at most k. So parameterized complexity is the study of such parameterized problems. And the golden standard of tractability, uh, called fixed parameter tractability, is uh, giving algorithms whose complexity may depend exponentially on the parameter, but polynomial on, on input size. So uh, we don't want uh, the parameter and the input size to mix. And one classical method uh, to achieve uh, such fixed parameter tractability results is via so-called kernelization, which is a method that 
uh, basically reduces an instance of a parameterized problem to a smaller kernel instance in such a way that the original instance is satisfiable if and only if the kernel instance is satisfiable. And crucially, uh, for fixed values of the parameter, this kernel instance is small. Uh, it has, uh, uh, you know, upper bound depending on the parameter value as well only and not on the instance size. So in other words, you can solve all the problems for fixed K by brute forcing a finite number of uh, kernel instances. And kernelization itself is often achieved by what's known as a data reduction algorithm. And the data reduction is basically an algorithm that maps an instance XK to a smaller instance X prime K prime. Uh, in such a way that it preserves the answer and the instance is smaller. And uh, you can apply a data reduction uh, several times. Uh, in fact, you, can, you may have multiple data reductions at one time and you can create a data reduction chain where the first instance in the chain is the original instance. The last one is a kernel instance for all the rules. You cannot reduce it anymore and uh, one instance follows from the previous one by applying one of these reduction rules. Okay, so this is pretty standard in the theory of kernelization. Now, uh, the main idea of our results is actually quite simple. Uh, we're looking at a negative instance, xk, of a parameterized problem in NP. Think of the set of all, vertex, of, of all graphs and parameters k such that the graph G does not have a vertex cover of size K. Of course, you can canonically map such an instance to an unsatisfiable formula. And now let's consider a data reduction for a problem. And if one could translate this data reduction propositionally in such a way that we can create efficient proofs of soundness of each data reduction step, if we can concatenate these propositional proofs of soundness of the reduction steps with a brute force uh, proof of the kernel, uh, then you obtain a uh, efficient propositional proof for the propositional formulation of the original instance. Okay, quite simple. In fact, uh, this is not really uh, uh, the way things are done uh, to propositionally simulate uh, mathematical proofs by data reduction. Uh, there are a couple of more details that make things a little bit more complicated. For instance, this formula phi i may be constructed from the previous formula by a case construction. And now you typically argue in a mathematical proof that one of these cases applies. So uh, you basically have like a tautology that expresses this case construction. And of course, when you do something like uh, a translation of this, you also need the proof of this tautology. And now uh, applying the data reduction with a case uh, will uh, create uh, one formula. Uh, and the formula itself is going to be uh, in fewer variables, but it's going to assume that you've made some variable substitution. You're going to, uh, you know, to make it an instance of the same problem, you're going to have to make some sort of variable substitution. So now if you put all the things together, uh, you may simulate a proof, uh, a mathematical proof via data reduction by a tree of propositional entailments. You don't really need this. You can uh, get away with just uh, um, a chain, but it won't hurt for our purposes. And for Frege proofs, it will turn out that the height of the tree will dictate the proof size. Of course, you also want the tree to have uh, an arity that is bounded, upper bounded by some constant. And now the proof of the formula will consist of all the proof of entailments of each uh, branch in the tree, plus the proof of tautologies that are applied for branching, plus a proof of brute force statements of the kernel instances at the leaves of the tree. And if the tree RIT is upper bounded by a constant and the number of nodes is exponential in the height, and as long as the height is logarithmic, this is polynomial. And uh, this is something pretty standard that has been done also in um, uh, other proofs in 
uh, proof complexity. Uh, if you unwind the substitutions uh, in uh, in uh, implicit in a reduction step, uh, basically you can uh, you're still okay. You're going to get a quasi polynomial proof as long as the height of the tree is going to be logarithmic. Okay, so uh, this is it. And uh, putting all these ideas together, uh, one can state a, a main meta theorem. It's a little bit too cumbersome to precisely state, but uh, the gist of it is that if you can witness the soundness of reduction rules in Frege, and if you can create a data reduction where the length of the reduction chain is constant, then you can witness uh, the unsatisfiability of the propositional translations using polynomial size Frege proofs. And if you want to get quasi-polynomial uh, proofs, uh, you, then you can uh, afford getting uh, like the, re the reduction chain, which is logarithmic in the formula size. And normally, uh, simulating this idea along one chain will uh, get you a polynomial size extended Frege proof if you confine your tree to have, uh, you know, polynomial height. So this is the general philosophy that we're going to apply, and we're going to apply this to several problems. So one of the problems that we want to apply comes from combinatorial topology, and to explain this, I'll have to start <clears throat> with what was known as Knazer's conjecture, which stated that if you color the set subsets of one, two, up to n, with n minus 2k plus 1 colors, then there are two disjoint sets, A and B, that have the same color. Now, this was uh, conjectured in 1955 by Knazer. It's a generalization of the pigeonhole principle. Uh, the cases k equal 2 and 3 had combinatorial proofs, but the cases k greater or equal than 4 were only proved in 1977 by Lovas and Barani, and uh, uh, their proofs used algebraic topology things like the borsu Coulomb theorem and the like. And it's true that there are combinatorial proofs that have appeared in the meantime, but these combinatorial proofs deal with exponential objects and they basically hide the algebraic topology behind the combinatorial language. And uh, no efficient purely combinatorial mathematical proof was known. So Knazer can be viewed as a statement about chromatic number of a certain graph where vertices are sets. For instance, in this example, uh, the universe has five elements and the sets have two elements. So we get the Peterson graph and two vertices correspond to two disjoint, that are connected by an edge correspond to two disjoint sets. And of course, Peterson's graph has chromatic number three. So Knazer generalizes a claim that Peterson's graph has chromatic number three. Of course, now you can view that the inner cycle already has chromatic number three. So you can think whether one can uh, get something more strong than Knazer that would uh, uh, quantify this. And indeed, that can be done. You can call a set with k elements to be stable if it doesn't contain two consecutive elements uh, on the circle, that is i and i plus one, but also n and one. And Schreiber's theorem is a generalization of Knazer's theorem that uh, proved that the chromatic number of this stable Knazer subgraph, uh, which is a subgraph of the Knazer graph, is also n minus 2k plus 2. Of course, the part that's interesting is that it is greater, strictly greater than n minus 2k plus 1, because one can come up quite easily with a construction that will, sh uh, that will color such a graph with n minus 2k plus 2 colors. And we propose to study Knazer Lovash theorem in a SAT paper in 2014. And we proved that in cases that uh, have combinatorial mathematical proofs, you can get Frege and extended Frege proofs. And we followed up this work in, at ICAL 2015. It appeared in the special issue in information computation in 2018. We did this with Sam Buss and uh, James Eisenberg and Maria Luisa Bonnet. And we proved that for every fixed k, these formulas Knazer n and k have polynomial size extended Frege proofs and quasi-polynomial size Frege proofs. So the knazer lovas theorem is not a candidate for separating Frege and extended Frege. And one 
um, idea of this proof was that for every fixed k, we showed that Nazer theorem has an easy combinatorial proof. We didn't give a new proof uh, by passing algebraic topology. We showed that we can reduce an infinite number of cases to the computer verification of a finite number of cases. Okay, so that's sort of the uh, gist of the proof. And in this paper, applying our main theorem, we show that similar results in terms of complexity hold for the formulas encoding the stronger Schreiber's theorem. And we do a data reduction of length order log n, and of course, this will give us quasi-polynomial uh, size Frege proofs. And the way to do it is we define a color class of the graph, of the, shape, uh, of the Schreiber graph, to be star-shaped. Remember that vertices correspond to sets, uh, and we call a color class to be star-shaped if all the sets colored with that color have an element in common. And there is a theorem of, of Talbot uh, that gives an upper size, an upper bound on the size of a color class that is not star-shaped. Uh, we can't really make use of this result because we would need to, to uh, uh, you know, to simulate it propositionally. Instead, we prove the weaker version, which we can actually sim simulate propositionally. So, uh, we prove that if C is a color class in the Schreiber graph that is not star-shaped, then it has this upper bound on its cardinality. And then uh, the proof goes by showing that essentially uh, if we had a n minus 2k plus 1 coloring of, a, of the Schreiber graph with parameters n and k, then we can basically drop theta of n color classes and theta of n elements corresponding to that intersection of those star-shaped color classes. So we have uh, theta of n star-shaped color classes, and that allows us to do a reduction, which is a length log n, and which gives us uh, quasi-polynomial uh, Frege proof. And now the paper has more applications of kernelization techniques to prove complexity. And uh, it's done for a variety of problems, such as vertex cover, dual coloring, which is a different parameterization of coloring, rather than talking about uh, a graph and its chromatic number as a parameter, we're talking about a parameter k, and a graph with parameter k, the instance is satisfiable if the graph can be colored with at most n minus k colors. Uh, we also talk about another, some other problems, edge click cover and de heating set uh, for which kernelizations were known. And in terms of techniques, some of uh, the uh, kernelizations were able to simulate our tweaks of classical ones that you can find in textbooks on uh, kernelizations. Although in all these cases, we've actually improved these kernelizations somewhat to obtain our results. So they're not exactly the same kernelization as usual. As, as usual, we need to change them a little bit to make the length of the reduction chain, uh, uh, you know, logarithmic or constant. So um, uh, we can prove, for instance, for vertex cover, we have polynomial size Frege proofs. Uh, so we have for uh, and for edge click cover, we have uh, polynomial size extended Frege proofs and quasi poly Frege proofs. And then there are other results which apply known techniques in kernelization, such as crown decomposition and some flower lemma. And again, here we have to improve the kernelizations to make the length of the, uh, of the reduction chain uh, logarithmic because in kernelization that wasn't an issue for us it is, and we're able to get polynomial size Frege proofs for dual coloring and extended Frege proofs of polynomial size for hitting set. But one of the more interesting applications of our result is to the area of computational social choice, uh, specifically to the theorems of Arrow and Gibbard Sather White. And I'm not going to mention to, to explain these results more than to say that they're fundamental impossibility results on ranking a number of objects M by N agents, satisfying a number of axioms. And both theorems show that 
uh, those axioms are incompatible. And the starting point of our work uh, was uh, some research in the artificial intelligence literature, specifically Tang and Lin, show that Arrow CRM has com com computer assisted propositional proofs, which basically reduce the general case N and M to a very to one case of Arrow CRM with N is two and M is three. And so something similar happens for the Gibber Satterwhite theorem. Okay, so this is quite similar to what has happened in our case with the Knazer Lova theorem. Uh, so it motivated us to take a look at the at the proof complexity of uh, of uh, proving the unsatisfiability of such formulas. Now, I have to say that for these results, uh, the results are quite, aren't quite as satisfactory because the formulas that, uh, the proposition of formulas that encode Arrow CRM and Gibbers Hathaway are quite large in N and M, they grow pretty big. Uh, so the point is that um, Tang and Lin gave data reductions of length theta of n plus m, and we managed to eliminate one of these parameters. We managed to make the reduction uh, of length depending on uh, the number of agents only, uh, so to eliminate the dependence on the number of objects. Uh, and these data reductions that we gave uh, have soundness that can be witnessed efficiently by efficient Frege proofs. So to conclude, our framework shows that uh, these such formulas have quasi-polynomial size Frege proofs and polynomial size Frege proofs whenever the number of agents is fixed. We don't know at this point how to uh, remove this dependency on the number of agents and uh, it's an interesting open problem. So to conclude, I hope that I've shown you that uh, there are theoretical interesting connections between all these different areas and that uh, one have, um, you know, one can apply uh, techniques from uh, proof complexity, sorry, from kernelization to problems in proof complexity. Uh, there are uh, other directions that are extremely interesting and we're interested in exploring them. For instance, uh, we've connected parameterized complexity to kernel and proof complexity to kernelization. But there are other techniques in this area, such as iterative compression or color coding, uh, that uh, may be useful for obtaining efficient propositional uh, proofs, and we'd like to do that. On the other hand, uh, to some extent, our result, although stated for Frege proofs, could be easily applied to, uh, it could be adapted to other proof systems. So in particular, we're especially interested in a system called SPR minus. So this is a kind of a proof system that came from the uh, SAT solving literature and it's proof systems with uh, no new variables. And it has its challenges because you're not allowed to do things that you're doing in extended Frege. So uh, the relevant work here is by Hoyle and others, and also by Bus and Toppen in SAT 2019. Uh, finally, a very interesting direction is sort of the converse one. And the question, an open question is, could we use lower bounds? You know, could, could we prove lower bounds on proof complexity for hard problems in parameterized complexity? So is it, uh, in a way, can we connect hardness in, in a parameterized sense to hardness in the proof complexity case? So that's it. Uh, thank you.